What's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. We are back talking Apple TV Plus C Season 2, Episode 2, which was titled Forever. An episode in which we see the return of some characters from Season 1. We say goodbye to a character and we get round one between the two brothers. We're going to break it all down here in the spoiler review, but before we do so, make sure you all are checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, well welcome to the community. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell, that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content. If you all enjoyed this the review of this second episode well make sure to like and share the video it helps out the channel a lot but also appreciate the support and once you've seen it let's talk about it in the comments we're talking full spoilers ladies and gentlemen so let me know what you thought about the return of Jermarell. we get the famous witch finder back in this episode we see boots dies and we have this secret that queen kane has let's talk about it all things that worked that didn't work for you and of course your thoughts theories and predictions for the weeks ahead in the comments below so just general thoughts before i dive into the breakdown down. This is another fantastic episode, ladies and gentlemen. And what I'm loving about these two episodes so far is I'm loving the world building. I'm loving that we're going from these different tribes seeing how people kind of maneuver the politics, the, the trickery, the lies, the deception, all the different stuff that's building so far. This tension between Ido and Baba Vas. Even though this is only two episodes in, I feel those 25 years of that absence and that hate that Ido has towards his brother. It's the Dave, Dave Batista and Jason Momoa stuff. This has been fantastic for me. And then you throw in the the, the stuff that we get with Queen Kane and then obviously Jerry Morrell back in the mix. I just thought this was a really great episode, but I want to know what you all thought about it in the comment section. But let's break it all down as we open up the episode with the return of a character, Jerry Morrell, who we see, we haven't seen him since season one and obviously get his eyes you know poked out by Baba ba, Voss that scene last year was incredible but we see after numerous procedures he's trying to get his sight back and he has not had any luck so far but he is determined to not be a blind person as he's having his kids teaching him how to walk around and all that stuff so it'll be interesting to see I mean this guy has been having kids in all these different area codes it'll be interesting to see if he's able to find a way to get his sight back but I hope he doesn't because this guy is terrible he's a terrible man but nonetheless it'll be interesting to see how he'll play a pivotal part in this role because he seems to have an alliance with Ido who we'll talk a little bit about later but we switch back and we see that Ren allows Hanawa to walk around and kind of see how people are living and again this is where we see the world building we see how they're navigating things and functioning and all the different ins and outs of this particular part of this tribe that Ido is the commander of and I just love this stuff that we're getting to see so far but it's in this moment that Ren and Hanawa get a little bit closer. She shows her her modern apartment, which she's been keeping care of since, you know, she's moved there, which was just like, it's really unique to see. This is centuries ago, but it looked like it was a 2021 apartment you can found somewhere downtown, but neither here nor there. They're starting to get closer. She's reading her her favorite book, Alice in Wonderland, which is very uh, coincidental because that story is very kind of similar to them. They kind of feel lost in a world where they have sight, but no one around them has sight. So very kind of interesting parallels between that story. But things get a little bit more hot and steamy because these two characters show compassion and show that they have a romance and they kiss each other, which honestly... I kind of saw that coming based on episode one, but I thought that was going to be something that was going to maybe kind of develop over the season. But I, I personally, I, I knew it was coming, but I felt like it was a little bit rushed. Two episodes in for them to have this kind of relationship so early on in regards to like, I'll protect you and I'll do this and that and just them caring for each other so much. Again, I get there in dire needs. They have this connection. They have a lot in, in common, but I'm just like, wow, that, that relationship seemed a little bit rushed in my opinion, but neither here nor there. It's a relationship that I think that we'll obviously visit later in the season because they get separated that we'll talk a little bit about later. But let's go to the big brothers. As we get a little bit more backstory between Baba Voss and his brother Ido, as Baba is still hung up in the torture room and we hear Ido say when I was younger you used to do the exact same thing to me I, I said it last year I would love a not even like an entire episode but just like a flashback re you know cast them as younger kids I want to see that relationship when they were younger I want to see their dad and see how he how he raised his two sons and just kind of get a little bit more of that depth and that you know that tension between two brothers I would love to get like a flashback sequence but we learned that Baba Voss and of course, I assume that his dad made him do these things and, you know, hardened him and made him become the famous, uh, you know, uh, dangerous Baba Voss. But we see Ido 
tells him that I will always torture you because I want you to know the pain that you gave me. I'm going to give that right back to you. And he kind of gives him like, if you all have seen uh, The Dark Knight Rises, he kind of sounded like Bane in that scene when <laughs> he was saying that, you know, after I've done all this stuff to you, then I'll give you my permission, your permission to die. Very similar to that line by Bane. But nonetheless, like I said, even two episodes in, the performance by Dave Bautista and Jason Moa, I feel all that hatred, all that tension between those two brothers, more so on Ido's side, because Baba is just like, I'm sorry, brother. It was just how we were raised. My dad did make me do those things. So I just love the dynamic between those two characters. But moving on to Queen Kane, who's getting advice from the console, and she is not want to hear it. She is, they're trying to tell her this is a terrible idea to go to war and she's just like no and obviously we know she's scheming because she was the one that destroyed her own people but it's just so interesting to see Magra trying to talk and sigh and plead with her sister she just doesn't want to hear it Queen Kane who I love and not love because she's a you know a character you want to root for but just the way she portrays this character I don't want to I mentioned Game of Thrones last week and she's nowhere on this level but I love how the show's kind of crafting her to be this kind of Cersei like a character a character you love to hate but she's just a great character in regards to just the the thing she's willing to do to make sure she's safe is just like Cersei type of levels right and we'll talk about her decision at the end of this episode but speaking of people trying to convince people we see Ido trying to convince his main leaders that we need to, you know, take on this site. We need to take advantage of people with sight because people that have sight in this world and this kind of new age that they're in is going to have power. But the people are like, nope, we despise sight. We'll kill anyone that we know that has sight. And that's where he brings up Jeremy Morrell. And we'll talk about their bond that they have a little bit. But again, the idea is if you have sight on your side, you will be in the rule. You'll be winning, you know, everything. You'll have control of everything. So, Going on to another return of a character, a character that kind of was like, again, I keep thinking of Game of Thrones, but kind of like a Jamie character, right? We get the witch finder as he is the cellmate of Baba Voss, and this is where Baba learns that his wife is alive, and obviously he doesn't trust him at first, but it's just like, why would he lie? Why would he even tell you that? So he tells him that Magra is alive, and they have to inevitably work together, which we'll talk about that awesome action set piece a little bit later, but... Going back to the trickery of Lord Harlan as he is scheming his way into Queen Kane, he's like, hey, I think it'd be a good idea if we marry each other. You know, I have my army, I ha you'll have my support, and we'll, you know, we'll rule together. But she's like, no, I'm good. You can marry my sister, though. You know, she's not married to Baba Voss because it's not a part of their, you know, their, their the way that they're, they run their things, and, you know, he's dead. So he's like, oh, that's, that sounds a little bit interesting. And, of course, she tells him to uh, bend the knee, and then you know what that means when it comes to Queen Kane, but as I had mentioned last week, when we saw that little boy chasing after Baba Voss, I was like, that little kid can see, right? And obviously, he does because Hanawa sees that he can see, and this is where we learn that arrangement between Ido and Jermarell, that there's like a secret group of kids that they have kind of exchanged in exchange for just kind of having protection and having this alliance between the two, so that speaks more to Ito's doing some scheming of his own and working with Jeremy Morrell, which it sounds like those two might later down the season might team up to go against Baba Voss. So that's something to keep an eye out for, no less. But as we kind of wrap things up, Baba Voss sees his daughter, Hanawa, and you know he, we think that they're not going to be able to see each other again. And this is where Ren tells her, I'm going to always protect you. But that's kind of court cut short because we see Ito tells, you know, to take Hanawa to his headquarters, and of course, Baba Voss is taken on to his way, but this is where we see Ren keeps her promise. She breaks Hanawa out of her confinement, and one of the more darker moments of this entire series so far, and I don't think this is redeemable for Ido, he sends one of his men into his niece's room in his headquarters, and has his man force himself on Hanawa. I'm like, whoa, this is getting... First, I'm thinking that he was going to do that. But he's like, don't worry, I'm your uncle. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have another person do it. And I'm like, wow, this is extremely dark. You know, Ren does save her and keeps her promise to keep her safe. And I'm just like, dude... Ido is not playing around. He truly hates everything about his brother and anything anyone associated with his brother. But moving on, we get the moment we've been waiting for, kind of the round one between two brothers who we see Ido gets the upper hand. He has the moment to kill his brother. Hanawa comes in, takes her uncle out. I'm just thinking in my head, just kill him. Just kill him right then and there. Of course, you don't want him dead because that's obviously the character we want to see you know, throughout the season. But I'm just like, why show him mercy, Baba Voss, as he tells him, if you ever hurt one of my kids or come near my kids again, I'm going to 
you know, burn this whole village down and kill you and have you smell all your friends and family and stuff like that. Very badass moment. But then we see, you know, Ido say, oh, this is the Baba Vas. Like, I love that moment when uh, uh, Dave Batista gives him uh, that laugh there. But again, that's a mistake by Baba Vas to give his younger brother mercy. But as we move forward, surprisingly, as they're escaping, Ren stays back, which I thought was very surprising. I thought she would have went with her. But I don't know. I think people are going to put two and two together uh, that she was able to escape and how she was able to escape. And I think they might do something to win. And I hope she's not dead because, again, I want to see that relationship continue to develop. Even though I feel it was rushed, I still want to see their, their relationship develop as the season goes by. So as we end the episode, we see Boots is checking in on Queen Kane. She has now killed this innocent woman who's been taking care of her that gave her the news that the baby has died. And she's just killing her, stabbing her as she's talking about what she's told her. And we go into Boots saying that, I, I, I'm sorry, I'll give you a better, stronger, sighted baby. And she says, oh, you stupid boy, and kills Boots, which... <sighs> I, I wish it was someone else that could have killed Boots, and particularly Hanawai, as she promised, and you know everything that he did to them. I mean, he deserved it, uh, as far as the confines of the show, right? I don't condone murder, but I'm just talking about he deserved that moment for that character and what he did last year. But I wish it was another character, and the way he died was just a little bit underwhelming. But he's dead, and she is now going to go on with this lie that she's still pregnant. So. I don't know how long she's going to go with this line. People are going to be like, it's been uh, nine months, Queen Kane. When is that sighted baby coming? But she might find another sighted person to get her pregnant. Who knows? We know Queen Kane comes up with some evil, deceitful, uh, dis you know, despising things that she can come up with. But we'll see what goes on with this. We did not get much of Kofu in this episode. We didn't get a lick of Paris. We don't know who was the group of people she ran into last week, but I assume we'll catch up with her last week. But Or next week, I should say. But I thought overall... The world building, like I said, my biggest kind of issue with this episode, I feel like the, the relationship between Haniwa and Ren was a little bit rushed, in my opinion. But outside of that, the action was top notch. Seeing Baba Voss and the Rich Finder killing all the men was fantastic. Baba Voss getting his, you know, uh, moment with his brother there was fantastic. And again, just that world building is so fascinating to me. But I really enjoyed it. But let me know what you all thought of episode two, titled Forever. Your pros, your cons, and of course, your thoughts and theories for the weeks ahead. If you all stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate every single one of you all. Make sure before you head out to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any of my other content. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Hope you're staying safe, and we'll see you on the next video.